To say Chelsea have been involved in a few transfer market dealings would be the understatement of the century. A large barrage of discourse has since ensued as a result of the substantial number of acquisitions made by the Pride of London, certainly around the sensational deals regarding Enzo Fernandez, Moises Caicedo and Mikhailo Mudrik to name a few. However, it's not just the first team that's had a heavy amount of investment. The Todd Bowley consortium have also focused on recruiting talent to come good given the correct development down the line, emphasizing their desire for a more long-term payoff. Frustration grew amongst the online Chelsea fan base. Questions were raised about the need for such heavy youth investment when the same money could be spent on a world-class striker or a world-class goalkeeper, two positions in desperate need of recruitment. Although the concerns continue, some of the animosity has been quelled by the sensational rise of one of the youngest signings made by the Bowley Consortium, that being the Ecuadorian Kendry Paez. Before I continue, I would like to quickly remind you I am running a giveaway with ownasaber.com where at 15,000 subscribers you could be in with a chance at winning the King of London lightsaber, the perfect saber for every Chelsea fan. Three participants will be chosen and all you have to do to enter is subscribe to the channel and check the pinned comment down below for more information. And with that, on with the video. Kendry Paez was born on the 4th of May 2007 in Guayaquil, Ecuador, the largest city in the country. From a very early age, like the rest of his peers, he grew up watching football, dreaming of playing in the biggest stadiums under the brightest lights. Paez joined his first academy when he was just five years old, the Academia Alfaro Moreno, founded by the former Argentinian striker of the same name. This said academy worked alongside another club, Barcelona SC, the 16-time Ecuadorian Serie A winners. In 2015, when Paez was only eight years old, Barcelona SC was provided the opportunity to register Kendry Paez as one of their own. However, the club declined this opportunity, believing it to be unwise or even unheard of to pay for an eight-year-old academy player. Following this failed move up the ladder, the Ecuadorian would leave the Academia Alfaro Moreno after three years to join Emelec, another side in the top flight of Ecuadorian football. Paez would stay for little more than a year before switching to the oldest team in Ecuador, still playing football, that being Patria, a club founded in 1908. Paez would enjoy another year growing and developing as a young prospect before moving to the club he still plays for today, Independiente de Val. Paez had just turned 12 years old when he joined Independiente del Val in 2018, the club where he would establish himself as one of the best South American Wonder Kids football has seen for many years. During his teenage years at the club, Paez obsessed over two particular players, his fellow countryman Gonzalo Plata and the greatest of all time Lionel Messi of Argentina. I don't need to give much of a reason as to why Paez would look up to someone like Lionel Messi, the man who's won it all, who plays with the same grace of a Russian ballet dance. Answer. However, Gonzalo Plata is an interesting one. Plata and Paez were in fact teammates of a sort at Independiente de Val for a season before Plata would move to Portuguese side Sporting in 2019. Although he's nowhere near as well known as someone like Messi, it's clear to see why Paez would look up to him. From the clips on screen now, I hope you can see Plata's style in full. The Ecuadorian has worked heavily on his ability to control the ball in tight spaces, keeping it close to feet, allowing him to make split second decisions when faced with an opponent. Do I body faint? Do I change direction? Do I attempt to nutmeg? Do I knock it past him and use my acceleration to get the better of him, which leads to two outcomes? I progress the attack or I win a foul. Both are advantageous to my team. I have no doubt Paez would have watched him closely in training and saw how this dedication led to a move to one of the most prestigious clubs in Europe. Some may sniff at the fact, but the bottom line is when you're a kid growing up in Ecuador, a move to a club like Sporting is a dream come true. So you can only imagine what a move to Chelsea is like. In 2022, Kendra Paez would break into the world of football through his highlight participation in the annual Next Generation tournament hosted by RB Salzburg. This is an under-16 tournament made up of some of the biggest clubs in the world, including Bayern Munich, Benfica, Inter Milan, and RB Leipzig. For those of you who don't know, those four clubs I've just mentioned are known for producing some of the most outrageous talent to ever lace up a pair of boots. But it would be 15-year-old Kendry Paez who would be crowned the most outstanding player of the tournament. His performance in the tournament attracted the attention from some of the biggest clubs in the world, including Borussia Dortmund and Manchester United. In fact, the Red Devils had a bid rejected for the Ecuadorian wonder kid in December of last year, and thank God they did. 
Following the tournament, Independiente Del Valle took the wise decision to promote Kendrick Paez to the senior team. Bear in mind, he was still only 15 years old. The Ecuadorian would make his debut against Mushakruna in the Serie A, marking it with a goal. In scoring against Mushakruna, Kendrick Paez officially became the youngest goalscorer and debutant in the history of Ecuadorian top flight football. Paez wasn't just setting records in league football, however, he was setting records internationally. Paez began his international career playing for the under-17 Ecuadorian national team, scoring and assisting against the likes of Brazil, Argentina and Chile. Later on, he would be included in the under-20 FIFA World Cup, representing his country in the Argentinian-held competition. He was the youngest player in the competition, and with a goal against Fiji, became the youngest player to ever score in the 46-year-old tournament at 16 years old. Shortly after, it was announced Paez would be introduced to the Ecuador senior side, a massive achievement that shouldn't be overlooked. In his debut for the senior side against Uruguay, a game which ended in favor of Ecuador, with Paez registering an assist, Kendra Paez would become the youngest ever player to represent the Ecuadorian national side, along with becoming the second youngest player to participate in the South American tournament, second only to the legend himself, Diego Maradona. Paez does hold a title over Maradona, that being the youngest ever goal scorer in the history of the Comebol World Cup at 16 years and 161 days old. On the 5th of June 2023, it was announced Chelsea had signed Kendry Paez from Independiente del Valle for a little fee of 20 million euros altogether. However, due to his underage nature, Paez will stay with Independiente del Valle until the summer of 2025 when he turns 18 years old. This is probably for the best, as following his recent international success, his value and stardom will only continue to grow, and so having Kendry Paez continue his development away from the noise of the English press in a familiar league, this gives both the club and the player ample time to prepare for their eventual coming together. This is somewhat similar to the situation regarding Endrick, another player Chelsea were keen on signing. At one point, it appeared a deal had been agreed for the 16-year-old Brazilian sensation. However, it was Real Madrid who forked out the demanded 16 million euros plus 12 million euros in taxes for a signature that's 72 million euros altogether for a 16 year old I would like to point out that since signing for Real Madrid, Endrick, who plays at striker, has scored eight goals and registered zero assists. In that same time, Paez has registered seven goals and seven assists, whilst playing as an attacking midfielder who operates mainly on the right-hand side of the field. Of course, it's far too early to tell who will have the biggest impact on their respective teams. However, at the moment, it does appear Paez is currently offering more to his side than just goals. I think I've covered all the relevant background information, now let's have a look at the player behind the headlines. Being so young, Paez is relatively versatile and can be moulded into whichever position is most required from him. Although, as mentioned earlier, the Ecuadorian thrives when playing as a central attacking midfielder or on the right-hand side of the attack, similarly to Lionel Messi. When on the ball, he is incredibly technical. His first touch is immaculate. Standing at 5'8", he has the perfect balance in terms of physicality. What I mean by this is that he's not overly tall to the point where his ability to maneuver around players is hampered, but he's not short enough to the point where he finds himself dispossessed off the ball from a challenge at the hands of a bigger player. I mentioned his first touch, and it's something I'd like to explore more. Having a strong first touch in the top flight of any division is a massive advantage over your opponents. It can be the difference between starting an attack or losing possession and Kendrick Paez has certainly worked on his first touch for a while. He has taken on the traits of Gonzalo Plata in that he is able to keep the ball very close to his feet in tight spaces. This allows Paez to break through the press with quick footwork and ease. The fact he's only 16 and playing to this level is really exciting as a Chelsea fan. Another one of the youngster's many strengths is his ability to use his opponent's momentum against them. Paez is very capable of running with the ball before either fainting one way or stopping with the ball completely. The Ecuadorian Serie A is ranked 18th in the world by the International Federation of Football of History and Statistics in terms of its quality, above the likes of the Belgian Pro League and the Scottish League, which is dominated by the likes of Celtic and Rangers. His opponents are no slouches, and yet he makes them look like amateurs, sliding past or even losing their balance against a 16-year-old player. He's not just slick on the ball. Paez possesses a rather impressive passing and crossing range. This should be obvious through his seven assists, but it's something that shouldn't be overshadowed. Whether he's crossing the ball across the face of goal, attempting a Travella through ball or a long-range lob over the defense. Paez has no issue generating the power nor the technique required to pull something like this off successfully. 
being able to create good chances for your team is an invaluable trait, which again, will be highly sought after in the Premier League. Imagine if Paez had someone like Victor Osiman or Benjamin Sheshko on the end of his passes and not Junio Shaw Noza, a link up I'm desperate to witness. Now let's talk about something even more fun. Finishing. I think the correct word to describe Paez's finishing ability would be audacious. The Ecuadorian is not afraid to take shots from the edge of the box, nor is he withheld from attempting chips against the keeper from very tight angles. It also helps that Paez has the ability to use both feet when faced with the keeper, making his overall attacking play far more dynamic than a player restricted to using only one foot. One of the worst examples would be Hakim Ziyech. Although his left foot play created many great chances and scored some rather spectacular goals, his right foot is completely useless and is rarely utilized, meaning defenders know the easy way to keep Ziyech quiet is to keep him on his right. Paez doesn't have this issue and so he's far more of a defender's nightmare. At the end of the day, he's still only 16 years old and is playing to a level which rivals a good number of professional players today. I wouldn't be surprised if he rivals players of the ilk of Phil Foden when he eventually arrives to the Premier League in 2025. Only time will tell how good Kendrick Pires will turn out to be, but all signs are pointing out towards success and brilliance. Maybe Bowley's approach of buying every other talented player in South America will pay off. One thing's for certain though, and that is I am incredibly excited to witness his debut in blue. And that about wraps up today's video. If there's another player you would like me to break down, let me know in the comment section down below. I have been the Quick Take, and I will catch you on the next one. See you later.